Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Now edge back as far as you can go to counterbalance me. Don't no one get out the door either, we're all gone. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Get back, get back. Now hold still and don't nobody move. Don't move at all. Don't no one get out the door, we're all gone. Now, edge back as far as you can go to counterbalance me. Hold on a minute, lads. I've got a great idea. Uh. This is the self preservation society. The self preservation society. Put on your arm and rock some dainty roots. Flash your MCD. Another day on Papa, and now it's time to look at the boot situation and the inner valance. Inner rear valance. First, we're going to take off the bumper and the underriders. Now, these underrider bolts they are going to be seized up. I doubt I'll even get that undone. I'm just going to grind the head off it with a croc sander. Ain't no point trying to undo it, I know it'll just strip. This one's not even got a head on it to do it, so grind them off. These will come undone all right, these 13s for the irons. There. And then straight away we've got a hole in the boot. There. I don't know how far it's gone. It's about to go the whole way round there. Might get away with plates, I hope so. Well, we will, we've got no choice but to plate it. A hole here. Other than that, that's a good boot. So this one's cleaning up and vacuuming out. The valance at the back is what I'm interested in today. Bumper off, as I said, and then cut this. We're not gonna drill any spot welds just yet. We're gonna cut and just extract it in sections. There's no need to extract the panel, no need to make it harder than it is. A lot of it's gonna break away already. You can see it's it's coming away, it's almost gone. There. Looks like the spot welds have actually given. I've never seen that before. It feels like the inner lip's still intact, but the spots have given up. If I slice along the top, Slice along the bottom, take the se big section out, I'll be able to see where I'm up to. We've got to get to the top here and get these spot welds off for the new panel. That'll be the hardest part. So we're hoping to spot weld the new panel on properly 
so I don't want to drill from the top here you've seen me do this repair before I don't want to drill from the top there because then you've got a plug weld it doesn't look as good so we've got to extract from the bottom it's a little bit trickier that way but it's worth the payoff let me get me a uh, socket wrench the electric one I'll just whiz these and uh, I'll grind that off we've got the Makita crock sander ready to go Makita ready there and that'll take these heads off there leave that with me Pete see we'll be back the bumper will be off Okay, I'm gonna cut I'm gonna cut along here. I know it's welded there. I know it's welded all the way along there, they're nasty. They're nasty them ones. There's some nasty ones. So we're gonna get to work. Get these off. Some spot welds to drill. I know it's attached here as well, they're nasty too. Right on the edge of the bumper. We might be better off just chiseling them. They're gonna be horrible. Attached there, attached on the bottom edge. Might just cut it in half actually, straight down the middle. I start rocking it like this. Tempted to cut it in half. Then down there and down there and pull that piece. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Slice there, down and down, and rock that bottom first, get rid of that, then start coming up at the top. Gotta get through these nasties. Very nasty indeed, at least they're pronounced. Let's see what we can do. Here's a good one for you. A nice thick slice of thin Lizzie. Look at that. Pure filler for the back end. You can see where it's had the, a reverse crash. As Andre backed into something, or his brother has backed into something. Andre's the owner, by the way, the original owner. Did he back into something there and then skim, skim liberally? Yeah. 
We're going to remake these stickers, by the way. The Bridgestone stickers. I'm going to get them remade. Don't worry about that. Slice through and coming off. There was just two spots in the middle here. I told you to be there. And there's some further ones up as well. With some really horrible ones. But that's the middle section coming away now. Held down by the last of the spot welds to the bottom of this lip. So we're going to have to get into those now. Peel these ones back. Sometimes you can... Sometimes you can rock them off, but I don't want to break the bottom lip. Panel's looking initially okay. Still in Ford Primer. Damage up this end. We it broke the paint with a the crash. Then it's rotted. Here, not too bad. Clean up and it should be all right. There's enough of it uh, to save. That's for sure. So it's a savable rear panel. Rear inner valance. Okay, join me close up and personal. With a few tips on if you're doing this job. Or similar certainly for this job this is the rear valance I've sliced it in the middle as you saw and then we're looking for spot welds we've got a lot a lot along the top and we've got a load in the middle now top ones I'm going to tackle separately as it all becomes too much because the panels curved here you can get the slitting disc in and down and start to break it down into sections that's the best way to tackle this job small pieces at a time hack away at it chisel away at it chip away at it eventually it'll crack now you can use spot weld drill bit like this one or it's a bit faster and does get a better result croc sand I'm using a 12 mil croc sander on 60 grit and I'm just finding the weld then weakening it I'm not going all the way through I'm just weakening it and then when you start pulling they'll just snap the final bit of metal just rips out that way you don't damage the metal behind it which we've got to keep intact so I'm weakening each one then rocking it and then the snapping as I go so we're up to here now hold on up to here we're carrying on going. We broke there. That one just broke on its own. Now we've hit a cluster. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's another eight left plus the tabs. Swing you around. Eight left plus these tabs here. But I've got to carry on the cut. I'd stop the cut because this was in the way of the grinder, this piece. So I'm going to fold it back so I can get that cut up the top. And then we should get that out without too much craziness. Spot weld drill bits do work. You can go through the other panel and they tend to blunt quite quick. The croc sander, if you're careful with it, is your friend and it does help. So we should have this half done shortly. Keeping you away from the sunlight there dazzling the lens. But yeah, that's the process. The top piece, I haven't come up with an idea for that yet could go under with the croc sander one at a time it's a long haul but I suppose that's what we'd have to do put the end of the crocky underneath each one and attack it that way then start tin, tin opening it back probably be able to weaken them grab it and then twist do a mic a mad mic and twist these that was his technique that he taught me okay so we're up to the I've got to get a, that slit continue across here now then start breaking into these ones you'll probably be done by the time you get back you all okay out there we're going good pizza at the controls project papa you're watching cortina city and we are replacing a back balance it's not in stock yet but we're prepping we're prepping so we've got this far by a combination of a slit disc, a crocky, a spot weld driller, a very thin fine chisel, good quality, this one is a Teng Tools one, nice slim solid piece, buy cheap it won't work, 
that I get decent tools if you're doing something like this. The chisel was handy to lever up some of those stubborn welds. Actually weren't that bad. You can see how effective it is. Those were just glanced over with the crocky and it tore the middle. And now we're just on these tabs at the end where the bumper irons go in. They're very hard to get to and they're hard to see. So I'm just going in and folding the ear back. It's an inner tab you see, so we're just trying to see where it's attached. It's quite a it's quite a pain. I'm just gonna have to hit it with a crocky. I need another belt. I'm gonna hit that with a crocky and that should be the end of that piece. A little bit of a lower section to remove there. Not much holding that on. And then I'm going to go down that end and do the same. Then for the hard part. The hard part is the remainder of the out panel as it's stuck up into the combination of the boot floor and the upper outer panel free sandwiched together. There's only one way to do it that I can see that's going to make life easy for us and that's this bad boy. Under, one at a time, bump, bump, bump. And then, these are another good tool to have. Long nose, again, tang, needle nose, grip the strip that we expose here. We'll grip it on, then we'll do a mad mic and we unfold as we go. But we'll, we'll weaken each one, we'll stop, we'll be unfolding, then it'll hit the next spot weld. We'll hit it with this, weaken it, ping it, it'll hit the next spot weld, weaken it, and go all the way down. Why make life difficult for yourself when with the right tools you can just make life easy? I remembered what I was going to say. Another tool, some stronger locking jaws. So a combination of these two, they will help. Unpeel, just think about it logically, we'll catch it when we're beginning the unpeel run. Wish me luck, I'm going in. Okay, croc sander helped, got rid of that one. That one was right on the edge, it tore a little bit of the corner, but not much. I think you'll let me off for that. Those two pinged nice. But we've got some archaeology. I've just started taking the, this is the quarter, the whole quarter, it's a complete piece. Obviously we've, we're getting repair lowers. So that's why I sliced there. So I've just took the spot welds off where it joins the inner valance and then slowly peeling back but I can see a piece of archaeology in here can you spot it can you spot something that we found could it be something to do with the last owner what we're gonna do we're gonna break away at this end so this comes down on an angle so I'm gonna break this join here now and I'm gonna see can you see what's in there a little piece of archaeology way from the past there's a bottle top did you get it now it might have the name of the drink on top of the bottle top it might not it'd be interesting to see what our owner tipple was a wee bottle of scotch for ali mac yes andre what were you drinking what was the family drinking or was it a, a childhood bottle of panda pops is it going to take back all the memories for you is it going to bring back all the memories for you andre we've found some evidence and this is a great thing because this is an interaction between the human and the car of course you've got the car just is just cold piece of metal but the bottle top gives it a human connection someone drank the contents of that someone opened it will it have the the dig mark where it was opened will it have dna on there andre's dna let's pop the end off here and then we'll look at the bottle top and carry on going i'm ready to start on peeling down this run now there we are we're gonna just go for it so I grabbed that with the pliers and we, we undo it like a tin opener. Croc sand, break, croc sand, break, all the way down till we get to that halfway point. Step back and then you've done half the work. So you've broke it down into sections so it's not as daunting. And that's the trick with car restoration, folks. That's how I've managed to do the last few cars and got through to the end. Most of them averaging two years build time. Mike, of course, helping me on Swampy and kickstarting me along the way. Uh, another hard driven guy um, was Mike. Um, power, power, powerhouse. 
and then uh, it rubbed off onto me of course and then that's why I built all these cars don't let it don't you just think positive and break things down logically you won't always have the answers but quite often you'll be surprised what you can come up with that was relatively easy probably the easiest one I've done because along the years Pete C has learned and you can learn too by watching my videos let's break the end of this folks come on get snuggled up now on your live chat your super chatters you Patreons, you PayPalers, thank you for the support. Ali Mac out there, drunk as a lord. And Chris, stuffing his face on burgers. See you back sec. Patreons, Patreons, Patreons. Okay, let's go digging. And it's Pepsi. Andre's tip up. Disappointing, I was hoping for some hardcore beer, but wow. Look at that for a souvenir. No other detailing on it, but it's Pepsi. Has it got the ding mark? Can I see it? I cut my, fi I cut my finger as well. Nice. It's my fault for not wearing gloves. It's the only thing I forgot to say, sharp edges, nasty. Pete C preaching the uh, health and safety and what do I go and do? Silly me. Pepsi. Okay, once you've weakened all the spot welds, everything comes off like this using the long nose. It's actually double welded. They've actually got circular spot welds and they've got little side tanks welds i don't know why they've done that you've got two that's the side tank weld as well as the spot weld so it's just can you see at the edge of it it's got a little nip weld if you will but i've done all the main ones this one's gonna go just doing it one-handed the usual trick grip in there and just rock it there you go did you hear that a go did you see that? Did you see? <laughs> Did you see that? We're getting up all the way to the end now of this section. This will go. This will definitely go. Basically, you've broke them down, weakened them, and because we've made incisions and cuts everywhere, if you were salvaging a panel, you couldn't do it this way. It's only because it's a scrap panel. This is the only way to do it. Boom, boom. Okay, so we're clean there. All that's away. Step back. And now, uh, because we've broken into sections, we can now have a tea break and a Kit Kat. And then we can look forward to cleaning this up, but look how with no damage at all on the top edge Oops, tripping over the power cord yeah so that's how you do a clean removal of this panel and then it's just a question of cleaning it all up and then the panel from express panels they're, they're remaking one for me that's a company in Yorkshire express steel panels if you need Cortina panels express EX P R E S S E D expressed steel panels can make you anything you want. Okay, there's lead times and it ain't cheap on some stuff, but it's not bad on others. 150 quid for the back panel, 163. That's not a bad price considering a new old stock one would cost you probably double that, or if at bargain at 150. These are as good as, if not better. They're not pattern sills that they make at Express. So we'll carry on chiseling away there you've just got to be patient and it will pay off your patience will pay off I promise you okay so a, a refresh on what we did a slit slit it in half first broke it off the bottom broke it off the sides then slit it where it comes up on the on the sort of half curve there slit that broke the middle section out leaving just a strip along and then start nibbling at one end 
weaken each spot weld with a croc sander, just weaken it, then rock it, then long those pliers and un unpick it that way. And you'll get it without damaging this or drilling this. And now what you'd do, you'd clean up, you might be able to go through the original spot weld holes, it'd be nice if we can, we'll try that. Clean them all up, clean the underside, and when the panel comes you should be able to get your spot welder in and spot weld it. If not, then you've got to drill through and plug, of course. We don't really want to do that. We want to try and spot. I think you can do it. I think I've done it. Yeah, you have. You can do it. It does work. So we're good there. We get it nice and clean so we get a good burn through on the spot welder. Leave me to do this side. I don't think there's any point in me covering it twice. Wish me luck. I'm going in. You know, it's just a question of uh, attrition. And you'll get it just keep on hacking away like with anything in life you keep chiseling at it long enough it's gonna give in a pan in a panic they tried to pull the plug skynet became self-aware but it was too late and they tried to pull the plug in off the red flavia and a co-op copy malty milk dunk just a dunk Whoa. Mm. Beats Chris's burgers. Mmm. I burnt the calories off as well. 10k rum. One hour. One minute for 10k. Mmm.
I know it's crazy, but we've got to blow the chassis legs out. We can't wax oil them chassis legs with the risk that they're full of settled in dust and crud. It's much better because the shell's not been dipped. It's much better to jet washer in the back and blow the chassis rails out. <clears throat> we want to see clear water coming out. Sounds crazy because you think, well, water's going to get in, but it will dry <clears throat> once we get a. We're still in summer, you see, so this whole car will bake. You'd be surprised how hot this gets in on a, on a sunny day. It will bake and it will dry. <clears throat> we will also put compressed air in it and we'll wait at least a few weeks of hot weather and then we'll put the uh, cavity wax in once the bone dry. But uh, I'm going to have to blow them out. Permission to blast granted. the only way. The only way to make sure there's nothing in there. It's coming out clean. Everywhere else I've gone, like the doors and stuff, they've been full of crud. These Nothing blocked, looks okay, <clears throat> it will dry, I promise. Quick way to clean up the panel, just jet wash it. That, on a high pressure jet wash with the, uh, the lance on the, the hard setting, takes off all the loose stuff quick. Yes, you can wire wheel if you want, but this is a quick first one, and now we've got the uh, X-Rust converter. And you can see that where it was brown, sorry about that, where it was brown, now taking it to clean metal. So I put that on before I jet washed it. That's a de-ruster. That's the first process. We're going to cover that. Then we're going to weld in the patch plates. We need a patch plate here. Uh, edge repair there. All good there, all good there. Patch repair here. This is very thin, we might lose that. An edge piece here, because that'll, that'll go through. And that's it. The bottom lip, luckily, I thought the bottom lip would crumble away. There's plenty there on the bottom lip. So the damage is minimal. It's better than I expected, to be fair. Quarters, better than I expected. A lot better than I expected. Some mess here. But, um, and a hole there. Plenty of metal. Plenty to go with, plenty to weld to. You're not gonna be chasing back too far. This side is a better side virtually intact this side you see our original repair there seam sealer in there wax oil at the back we're good there pretty good condition to be fair best i've seen on paper then so now it's uh clean up i put the working board back down we've vacked out and i didn't just tip the board onto the floor I vacked it with Henry because you don't dump rubbish on the floor even though I'm on gravel this gravel's coming up by the way it's getting replaced but uh, it's tired it's 20 years old but uh, yeah boot pickled at the back I've seen worse boots I'd say that entire bits ready to go through rest of the boots pretty good as I said 
a jet wash the boot as well. Again, humidity is low, temperature is dry, we're in summer, that'll dry out quick. Take advantage of the space and the working space that we've got. You couldn't do this in the workshop. So different tools for different jobs. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity and we're going to take it. An opportunity to jet wash, remove the rust and crud very quickly. So yeah, in my opinion, it's best to take that opportunity when it arises. Nice work, Chris. I left you just when I'd cleaned this panel up. It might just be immediately after that footage. Or it could be another day, another video. I don't know how it's panning out on the time scale. You have a rough idea in your head where you are up to your minutes, but once you're filming a lot, it starts to become all blurred. The lines between the good and the bad all get kind of mixed up. So, this plate... We completely took out that rotten corner it was gone look I send me hand here have a look at this let's get you under some non harsh light so that I could have gone just around the edge where it's hold but I think the whole thing whole thing hold was ready to go so we've gone to conservative overcut so we're flush now shape this panel it has a, a curve up then it goes flat and starts to curve back down and what I've done I've left metal longer than what we need so that when the outer panel comes on you can trim to suit because this will probably need a little tweak to get it to fit the panel when it's smoky you see he hears me talking then he comes along didn't you he thinks I'm talking to him didn't you lad hmm you keep away from here there's, there's metal metal and welders going on hmm you keep away from here, lad. It's dangerous. So, as I was saying, the uh, clamps go on now, our anal clamps, our butt clamps, whatever you want to call them. And we do the, the butt weld there. And then that plate's in flush. Just tied, tack it in the corner here. Then we're going to leave the bottom a little bit loose and a little bit oversized. And when the outer valance goes on, we'll trim it completely flush. That way it'll be a lot better. And we'll even get a spot weld around it here. So that plate, if it'll bash into shape, you can see it curves out. So we've had to scallop that slightly in a bit there. And then that goes nice and flush there. Harsh sunlight today on the uh, the job so it makes it a bit tricky to film really we'd need blinds at the side here the professional film crew would be doing that but PC can't do it okay so I need the welder on that that covers that area which all in one nice big go we're okay I'm not going to disturb any of the bottom it's all right there's plenty of meat there there's a little edge here, if you can see. I don't know if it's worth putting anything in that. I really don't think it is. Then we've got, probably here, this triangle. I've got a lot of the shape there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a flat piece in this and lay it in. I'll just cut out. It's going to be a triangular shape, that one. Uh, there, the nose of the triangle coming up, cut there. So angle grind in angle grind in and angle going across I expect that might try and uh, burn back when I weld it's quite thin here I'm not going to reshape that because that's very solid there this area is quite thin hopefully we'll cut back to enough solid metal then that's that area done I won't do any more in that that will get rid of all but one tiny pinhole there and I think that's our level that we cut off so we talk about these cut off levels and you have this sort of a target that you're trying to aim within. You might not get bullseye, but you're aiming within this target of um, job level, how far you want to go. Whilst each job is a quality job, it's how far you want to take it. So if there's one pinhole there, you're talking about uh, completely doing it, then you'd start getting rid of that pinhole. You'd look for another one. Depends on the level that you want to go at. And um, we're just sort of reaching for the big, the big stuff and then tapping it and if there's anything about to break through we'll do that but if there's a slight 
pinhole, smallish one, I might let a few of them go. Um, and But I'll rush treat them back, but I might let them through them go. And the reason being is that no one's ever going to know in my lifetime or anyone else's. This gets the paint on it, also gets the, the stone chip on it from the back. And a pinhole that's been stopped. I mean, yeah, okay, you can hit it with the, uh, the welder and just fill a few of them in. But they tend to blow bigger when you do that. How far do you go is what I'm trying to say. And I'll reach a little level which I'm happy at for this type of car anyway. So that's where we're going. Just get the bulk of it and get it something looking like right. It's going to be nice anyway. We'll probably have a lot less holes in it than a lot of cars that are on the road. So, you know, you've got to think of that. You've got to get things in perspective sometimes and just think of the slightly bigger picture. Because you could end up pumping in another 500 hours worth of ocd -ness for a car that you're not worried about the OCD level. You just want it solid, safe, reliable tidy first glance upon very very scrutinous inspection you'd start to to then reveal small things that doesn't matter ramble ramble over let's get the welder wheeled out get that in you'll just see that in there's no point in setting up for welding i am wary about burning the the lens on the um camera with the welder as well so i've limited the amount of welding okay see in a sec tax on clamps off tax on Clamps off. That's all you do with these. See how good they are. All done. Right, I'm going to carry on round there. Standing back a little bit for your sunlight coming in. Can't really help you with it. Very harsh light. Okay, carrying on. Right, with that welded in, you can actually then, the fact that it's welded, you can then start to create um, that kind of like the compression forces you need to the final shaping. So once it's sort of gone in around the top edge, it starts to become very stiff in position and you can then knock the re re remainder of that curve and then this flat, funny shaped section here was able to just shape in a lot better. I use the, this great little hammer here so flat like this and then getting that line there just pronouncing it a little bit just to get that so that gives us a pretty good repair patch welding's gone on good it's not blown back i wasn't chasing much i chased a little bit there but that was it so that'll flat that'll crock down pretty quick weld's gone in quite flush quite smooth at the back don't worry it's cooled down so that's gone in good that's that section done pretty pleased with that plate wasn't the easiest shape with it going in and back out sculpting back out once you dress that down that'll disappear I've then done the serrations here because there's a curved inner lip so that's cut we welded them serrations back together then this is oversized we'll trim that back when the valance comes in this is probably going to be a slightly different shape to the valance so we'll have to kind of crush them together we should get it should go there's plenty of metal there and there should be enough movement in that to when the valance comes crush it in here is like a nip in the corner with that flat spot we've got that right so we're okay there nice we're good to go there a little bit here now there's a pinhole there but it won't be it'll be bigger i'll start i might drill out that one with a, a 20 mil and put a disc in it that might work i can get in from the back to put the disc in with a magnet could do that if we wanted i could just try a cheeky hit with the welder it might get it you don't know okay another plate going in on this one because i'm getting from the back 
what I've done is slightly oversized. I've cut the whole square first and then slightly oversized a piece of metal and clamped it in from the back with these C clamps there. Then drew on the pen on it and we'll now be cutting to leave the blue line. So we'll be cutting on the outside of the, of the blue line and that should bring the plate in flush. You can do it the opposite way. Cut the plate and overlay it where you're doing, but it, it's easier this way because you can get the uh, the plate in from the back. It makes that uh, marking out a bit easier. So we'd unclip this now. I've just, by the way, I should be wearing gloves. I've said this before. Look what I've done again, and I've got the gloves, you idiot. Right, that comes off, and now we cut on the outside of that, and that'll fit him off. Take the paint off as well because it'll slightly crackle the welder but that plate goes in there actually metal wasn't too bad more solid than I expected would have got away with a smaller plate I was very over cautious there because normally what happens when you're doing this and again that pinhole filled in all right normally what happens when you're doing this is you cut and it's usually twice the size but it, in this case it's actually a bit less than that it's actually more solid metal around it so it should weld on pretty good that like the back pal panel's gone on that that repair patch okay here we go we're gonna get that cut out to shape just using the tin slips on this i think oh no i might use the grinder because the tin slips will warp the metal that's the problem so we need to grip this now and get the grinder slitting disc on it very carefully now gloves on please okay new metal goes in I was quite pleased with this patch repair in that went nice and flush following that contour line following that line and following that one blended in nicely so that's that bit repaired going along to here we've got this going in nice as well so if next door strimmer that's gone in good too okay these repairs are going good and what I've been doing is cleaning and prepping these areas for when the outer panel goes on they're going to need weld through primer on i'm also going to paint this but not in weld through in ford primer brown if i can find it before i do that i'm going to apply this spray liberally apply this you all join together then all together now spray liberally these are the contact areas where the spot welds will go Lower lip, upper lip, middle buffer. So we put that on, mainly on the lip, and just slightly above of it, because the heat will transfer and burn. This is a, a low burn, so when a spot welder hits it, it doesn't burn it off the same. So we go there, just in those areas. And now that is ready. What we do, we mask it and then overpaint in Ford Primer Brown, peel the masking back, and then you've got le you left them with your strips of weld through ready for the panel. So all the, all the uh, repair pieces are on, everything's cleaned up. The last one I think I left you doing was this side, it's now dressed up and it's there, blended in nice. It's all ready to go. Some rust killer goes on after the weld through. Then we're, then we're good. I'll rust kill it with a Dinatrol spray on. Spray liberally. And then when that uh, dries, it's then Ford Primer Brown. And we're done there. Then we'll move on to something else. Okay, so a little bit more weld through on. Mask off. And then um, we just hit it with the Dinatrol rust killer. Then the Ford Primer Brown, which is called Technogrip. It's a very good anti-corrosive tough paint. We could um, do the Raptor on here, but it wouldn't have had that. Uh, I don't want to do it because it's not what it would have had from the factory, even though we're not doing it to that level. The Raptor would give a good finish and it's also colour coded, but it wouldn't be. I'd be OCD in a bit. Catch you in a sec when I've prepared these areas, but there you go. Panel looking almost finished. At the back, we've saved it. Done a good job. Okay, you're on with a Technic grip in Ford Primer Brown. And just these low velocity air spray are really handy. We've mentioned it before on the on the film. Real good stuff. I'll carry on a couple of coats of this and uh, we're good to go. 
Okay, that's the paint on. That's your Techni grip on. Then the masking off for these faces for the spot weld when the outer panel goes on. So that's looking nice. A couple of pinholes I noticed, but I'm going to live with those. Show you the pinholes there and there. And I think there's one there. But I don't mind that, I can live with that. You know, we're 95%, which is what we wanted. It's a thousand yard car. Okay, so these pinhole there, can live with it. And one just there. But I don't think we've got a problem. And then the Technic Grip, sorry, the Gravitex on second coat. Gravy is in the tub over there. Gravy is in. Uh, Gravy. Raptor. That's on with a Ford Tawny Brown mix in it. There it is. Remember that? Remember that repair we did? Seems ages ago now down here. Seems such a long time ago when we did that. But it was nights no, only a few weeks. It's nights no, only a few weeks. Tank's got to come out. Of course, we've got a new one. Look at that. Showed you that. So that tub's done. Probably one more coat on that tub because that had not had its first coat. Second coat. Second coat's gone on down here. And then lastly, second coat is on here. We'll take these off now. I think you'll all agree. We've done a good job there. Of course, sing your praises when they're due, and they're due. Due, due. All right, so that's that stage. I'm going to do a tidy up now, and it's a, quite a major tidy up now because we've reached a milestone in the car's um, stage of uh, restoration. Because 95%, there's another 95 of the welding is done, and all the complicated working out bits are done. They're done. They're finished, and we're left with just tidy work. I'm waiting for panels to come from Express. Five week lead time on the rear valance. We're going to have to wait. What can you do? We'll switch to other jobs, as we always do at the city. Back of the panel needs cleaning up. I'll do that when the tank drops. I might drop the tank today. It needs to get it down out of the way, and I'll clean the back of the panel. We won't colour code the back of the panel, it'll just go in Gravitex, probably just a black shuts go on that one, a Gravitex black, the back of the panel, I'm not going to make a big job. I know I painted the inside of it and you don't see it, but that's because it needed priming anyway, and I may as well have used that brown Technigrip primer because I already had it in stock, I didn't go out and buy it, it needed using up, it'll eventually go off, that's a, a Leckler what's called Techni Grip. Very good rated paint was used on all my projects, or last two anyway. Definitely on Bramble and definitely on Ruby was the Techni Grip. It's a great, great paint. You can mix it to any colour you want. It's got a lot of anti-corrosive properties. It sets like rock, sticks like glue. It's great stuff. Techni Grip. T-E-C-H-N T-E-C-H-N-I-G-R-I-P -E -I, I think that's how it's spelt. It's good stuff. Look it up. You'll you'll see the reviews on it. Techni Grip. So that's on. That's it. I'm going to have a break. Coffee break now. Let's get dunking and we'll see you shortly. Eccles Cakes I believe we need. We've been asking for the where it was the root beer and the Eccles Cakes. Pete, see at the controls. Catching you soon. We'll be right back. Nothing can do what soldier can do. Army, recruiting now. Whoa! Where's this? Right. Where's this? I've got it. I know what I'm doing. And if you walk around the corner and get punched in the face, <laughs> you're like, oh, because you just aren't expecting that next thing. It's always. <laughs> Experts. 
Sage, help your business flow. E.E. Book Fibers, new broadband handle edge. And whatever you think that means, time to buy a zillion and dip it in chocolate. Because this broadband connects 100 devices in your home. This is broadband handle edge. This is EE Full Fly, powered by BT. 18.3% EE availability. Check coverage at EE to credit accounts. Soft Rock, Hard Rock, Planet Rock, where Rock lives. <laughs>